One of the first things I want you to begin to do right now is to take a brave look at your life. Look at your life right now where it is. So let me ask you some questions. As you begin to look out on the future, look out on this year, let's take personal inventory. What has brought you here? As you begin to look at the things that took place this past year, did you get out of it what you wanted? Did you achieve the goals that you set out to achieve? What part of your life or what things did you do that you don't want to be a part of your life? Are there any people as you begin to look at your life and look at where you want to go and what you want to do, are there any people that might be some dead weight that you need to think about unloading? Because what you have found through that relationship that it's more toxic than it is nourishing, it's more debilitating than it is empowering. And so now you've got to make a decision. See, many of us won't be able to move forward because we're not taking true inventory of our lives. As you begin to look at your emotional, your spiritual and intellectual development, how many books did you read? How many seminars did you attend? How many classes did you take to begin to develop yourself professionally, to improve your craft or your skill? How many new things did you learn? Just take some personal inventory, just thinking, just thinking, just thinking. Beginning to know yourself, what are the things about your past that has influenced you right now? What's your philosophy of life? What are your beliefs, things that you feel very strongly about? What are some of the things that you have picked up along the way that you've been doing them for so long you think that they're you, that you need to begin to re-examine them and perhaps get them out of your life? See, a lot of things we're doing, we do unconsciously because we picked it up somewhere in life. A friend of mine out of Chicago named Rhea Steele, I was at her house to have dinner, and Rhea, who was born in Chicago, has a tremendous southern draw. After I met her mother, I said, where did Rhea get her southern draw from? She said, my sisters came up from Kentucky, and they used to be her babysitter. And she picked it up while in their presence. And Rhea still has that draw. What is it that you've picked up somewhere in life that maybe be, might be a liability to you? What fear, what beliefs that you're holding on to tenaciously that's no longer allowing your life to work? It's not enabling you to produce the results that you want to produce in your life. And you're still clinging to them. See, as we go into a new world, there's some old behaviors that just won't fit. What are the events? What are the circumstances? What are the people that have shaped you? Just thinking, just thinking. What are the things that you need to let go? Some things that have cost you pain, that's stifling your growth and development. What are those things? As you begin to look at your profession or your career, what is it that you need to do to begin to upgrade your skills or your knowledge? to continue for you to be competitive in the marketplace. As you begin to look at yourself and ask some of these questions, what is something that you're good at? Are you living your passion? Are you living your dream? What do you regard as your greatest personal achievement? What is the one thing that other people can do to make you most happy? Let's think about these things. What would you do if you had one year to live and guaranteed success and anything you decided to do. What would that be? What would you do with your life if you had it to live over? Getting to know yourself. What is one value, one deep commitment from which you would never bulge? What is one cause that you would like to become involved in to make a difference on the planet? I work in the Cook County Jail in Chicago. It gives my life a great deal of joy and fulfillment. Have you found something like that in your life that you could enjoy doing, working with people? I have a friend that's working with physically handicapped people. She said it's been the most rewarding experience she's ever had. She used to be a constantly depressed individual, always feeling sorry for herself. It has changed her life. She's a grateful person. She's found something that she's lost herself in. What is your biggest setback, failure, or defeat of the past year? What is it about you if somebody really knew they wouldn't get into a relationship with you? Change.
change that. It's easy to blame the other person, but start taking ownership for where you are. Are you proud of how you have been living your life? Have you explored your natural talents, your gifts, by enthusiastically trying a variety of activities? Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us have so much talent and abilities, we just put them back on the back burner, just left them aside someplace. Never did anything with them, never brought them out here. Used to do them extremely well in high school or college, or just had a natural gift and never did anything with it. What are you sitting on? What gifts are you sitting on? Have you resigned yourself to a life feeling that nothing can be done to change your future or your circumstances? Have you been afraid to try something different because you're afraid of how people will react to you or what they will think? Those are some of the things that I suggest that you begin to answer yourself. Now, here are some things that I suggest that you begin to look at working on to develop your character. Some things that will give you some personal strength. Webster says character building activities. He says character, the pattern of behavior or personality found in an individual or group. Moral strength, self-discipline, fortitude. That's what's going to be required in order to begin to manifest your greatness. Now, looking at yourself, one of the things I'm suggesting you look at, what is it that you need to be in the process of doing more of or less of? Like being more direct. So I used to have a problem of not telling people what I actually thought because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Saying no without feeling guilty. More focus. So I used to be the jack of all trades and master of none. Used to do a lot of things. One year I decided to do one thing well. I looked at all of my talents and I decided the strongest one, my ability as a speaker, that's the one I'm going to focus on. But I'm capable of doing a lot of other things. But only when I decided to focus that I begin to reap the rewards of my talent. And then after you do that, you can begin to expand and use the other talents that you have. Deciding to keep your word. If you just decide, I'm going to keep my word. If I say something, I'm going to do it regardless. Being more considerate. More trusting. More disciplined. Being less fearful being more adventurous find something that you can look at your life that you say hey i know i've got a problem in this area being late i need to take care of that procrastinating i need to deal with that not taking care of business being seriously not serious creating an imbalance in my life where i'm spending more time looking at television or having social fun and not spending enough time working on me see most people ladies and gentlemen spend more time working on their jobs than they spend working on themselves they work harder on their jobs than they work on themselves. And whatever we achieve in life, whatever we create, whatever we're able to manifest comes out of the human mind. Now I want you to think about five things that if you had the courage to do them, it will give you a feeling of satisfaction and self-respect. Think of five things that if you had the courage to do those things, you would feel a tremendous feeling of satisfaction within and self-respect. Take the time to write those things down, whatever they might be to you. It might be in your personal life. It might be in your, your friendships, your family relationships. It might be in your business. I was negotiating with a friend of mine that I admire a great deal. And this person went back on their agreement and I did not challenge them on it. Number one, because of my admiration for her. Number two, because I really wanted the business and I think she sensed that. So I didn't want to seem too picky and I was nervous about it. And I was cowardly because I should have said, listen, that's not what we agreed to. I should have called her on that. But I didn't want to look bad or to appear to be negative or risk losing the business. Look at five things that if you had the courage to do those things, that you would do those things. A lot of people say, well, I've been like this all my life. I just can't change. I, this is the way I am. 
Dr. Harold Griswold, a psychologist and author of Direct Decision Therapy, said something. He says, when someone says, I can't change, some part of them wants to change, but the payoffs for his present behavior are greater than the payoffs for a changed behavior, or his fear of change is too great. Ladies and gentlemen, it takes courage to live your dreams. It takes courage to manifest your greatness. It takes courage to decide to live, to decide to bring out all of your talents and abilities, to decide to stretch out, to decide to take a chance. It takes courage to be happy, just to be you. I saw a friend who I hadn't seen for a long time. Her whole personality has changed. She was an extroverted, assertive person, but because her husband has a fragile ego. When she's around him, she caught on to him. She plays to him. She's very silent. She doesn't express herself, her feelings. And there are many things she wants to do, but before she even make a decision of what she wants to do, she checks, you know, how will he handle this? How will he see this? Will this be disruptive in our relationship? A lot of us readjust our behavior and we end up not being who we really are in deference to relationships, men and women. Looking at the word courage, Webster says the attitude of facing and dealing with anything recognized as dangerous, difficult or painful instead of withdrawing from it. As you begin to look at where you want to go and take personal inventory, it's going to be very uncomfortable. That's why most people don't do it. It's very painful to admit your shortcomings, to admit your weaknesses. It's very painful to do that. It's much easier to withdraw from that and just ignore it. He goes on to say the courage of one's convictions, the courage to do what one thinks is right. As you begin to look at yourself and look at where you want to go with your life, it's very important for you to ask yourself a question as you look at various areas of your life. Is what you are doing right now, is it giving you what you want? If it's not giving you what you want, it's going to take courage to decide to do something differently. It takes courage to enjoy yourself. What are some of the self-defeating behaviors that we become involved in that prevent most people from enjoying themselves? Some people develop the what's the use attitude. Why bother? Some people have the I really don't care. And they convince themselves that they don't care and they don't feel anything. And after a while, they really don't feel anything. 